So let's be real here. It's inevitable at some point a woodworking channel is going to make a chopping board, but in most cases, it's either an end grain chopping board or you're relying heavily on machines such as table saws, band saws, and planar thicknesses, for example. But what if you don't have access to all of that equipment? What if the only equipment you have is a jack plane, for example, and a bit of wood? How do you turn this wood into something that you can chop your cabbages on? I'm gonna show you that now, let's go. So first of all, Happy New Year to you all. I hope everyone's recovering well from your festivities. My New Year's resolution is at some point to get a haircut. Probably gonna be 2019 though. Um, so a little side note before I get started. This project is going to be running alongside the bass guitar project that I'm also doing. The link is up here for the first video on that. So then that way I can satisfy my urges of doing something stupidly complex and also satisfy the tutorial side of things so you guys can still benefit from my videos. So, getting close, let's um, have a look at what we've got here. Okay, so what we've got here is a big old slab of beech to start with, which is perfect for chopping boards. It's got a really tight grain on it, so it doesn't get too mucky, you don't get too much gunk stuck in there. It's quite dense, quite hard, and it's also pretty forgiving to work with hand tools, so really nice for this project. And here we have got a bit of oak, and the nice thing about this oak is that the growth rings along here are perpendicular to the top face, which means it is perfectly quarter sawn, which means that we get some really nice medullary rays along the top here, which is a sort of a sought after effect with oak. It'll be a lot more apparent once we plane it and shove a finish on it. So the way this chopping board is going together is we are going to sandwich this oak between two halves of this beach. So we're gonna cut this in half, spin it round and put it on this side. And the reason for this is because beech varies in colour quite a lot. Sometimes it's quite pink, sometimes it's quite yellow like this bit, and sometimes it's like this browny kind of hearing aid colour. So the reason I'm doing it over this length, cutting it in half, is to get rid of any colour variation that might happen. If I cut it in half like that, it means that I'm going to get a perfect colour match between the two halves of this chopping board, and it's going to look nice and pretty at the end. Now, before doing anything with this timber, we need to kind of analyze what we've got here. So looking at this beach, I can see that along this edge here, there's like some small splits along it. Now that can either be from um, incorrect drying at the sawmill, or it could be say where the tree was in a really strong storm or something like that, split the timber inside and it's just stayed there since the tree was chopped down. And also on the end here, there is sort of a split as well, which you can see on the end grain. Now looking at the oak, on this side, we've got a knot, which is a dead knot by the looks of it. So when I plane over this surface, there's a big risk of that knot just falling out. It's not actually part of the timber anymore. It's a little bit dry and a little bit crumbly. So it's not a massive issue with this because that's our glue face. That's gonna be up against the beach like this. So it will be hidden. The only problem I may have is when flattening this surface, because it's so close to that, I might end up exposing it on the top here. So I've got to be a little bit careful of that, but we've got about one or two mil to play with. Should be fine. If I expose it, then it's gonna be the bottom. The other thing about this oak is that there's about a centimeter of sapwood along the edge here. Not a massive problem for me. I don't care that much about it, but what I'll do is plane this top surface, have a look at it again, see if I still like it. If not, I'll just either saw that off by hand or it's only a centimetre or so, so I could probably attack it with a scrub plane if needs be. So in terms of tools you need for this project, a plane is an essential. I did a video on what planes do you need. The link is up here for that. So if you're a bit confused about the different sizes, different types and things like that, that'll be a really helpful video. This one is a jack plane or a low angle jack plane, and it's gonna work perfectly over something this length. The other plane that will be handy for this project, but not massively essential is a block plane, because once we stick it all together, this is quite nice for trimming end grain as opposed to a big plane that's sometimes a little bit cumbersome for something like that. So block plane is quite nice to have. Um, a saw, you do need a saw obviously to cut this bit of beech in half and to cut the splits off the end here. Preferably this would be a cross cut saw, but you could also use a rip saw. Again, if you're a little bit confused about what saws there are out there, there's a link up here for what saws do you need. Now obviously we're going to be wanting to plane this timber nice and flat, so a straight edge is something quite nice to have, but you don't need it. I'll show you later on how you can eradicate the need for one of these. And finally, something that's really important for this project 
is a pair of winding sticks. And I'll show you how we use these later to make sure the timber is nice and flat. These ones here are made from metal, but you can also make them from contrasting woods. You could get a bit of plastic. The only thing you need to make sure with winding sticks is that they are perfectly parallel along their length and they are perfectly straight. I choose metal because obviously it doesn't move over time, whereas if I was to use wood winding sticks, they might start bending and they might start expanding and contracting over time. And I can't be asked to stay on top of that. I'll just get something metal and I can always guarantee it's going to be a reliable point of reference. So I'll show you later how to use those. What we're gonna do now is cut the splits off this beach and cut it in half. Right, so first we're gonna cut this split end off. So I'm gonna get a square here and I'm just gonna square a line across the top using my Jesus pen. Now, those of you who have ordered Jesus pens and are still waiting for them, update. They got lost in the post coming from America, which is incredibly annoying. So I've ordered more of them now. Uh, they're on their way. I will send them out as soon as possible. For those of you that don't know, these Jesus pens have become a bit of a thing in my videos now, and I am selling them for £3.50. I am the only UK supplier of Jesus pens. So if you would like a premium Jesus pen, please visit my website and you'll be able to find them there. So back to the project, um, squared line across the top, I'm just gonna square a line down the edges as well. The more accurate we get this now with the saw, it's less to clean up with the block plane afterwards. So now I'm just gonna drag along my shooting board. This shooting board is gonna be replaced sooner or later, hence why I use it as a bench hook. Okay, I've just shimmed up the opposite side here to make sure it sits level on there. What I'm gonna do is get my crosscut saw. I'm gonna angle it up like this, and I'm gonna start nibbling away at the back of that line. And then as I progress through the cut, I can start lowering the saw down and take out the entire line. That means that instead of getting my saw lined up with the whole line and try and cut through like that and focus on getting the entire cut correct, I can focus on a little bit of the line at a time. <laughs> And now I'm approaching the end and I have got the entire line established across the top and now I can focus on cutting vertically. Cool, right we're through. So we've removed the really bad split from the end of this component, but it still looks like there's a tiny one here and that's the split that continues all the way up to the edge. Um, I could cut it all the way off up to here, but there's also some smaller splits further along as well. So and if I'm too fussy about it and I keep trying to remove those cracks, by the end of it, this chopping board will only be able to cut like a grape or something at the end of it. So that crack, relatively small, I'm gonna live with it, I think. Right, and with that end cut off, we are now going to cut this bit of beach in half. So at the moment it's at 860 millimeters, so cut it to 430. And that's going to be the overall size of our chopping board. Yeah, yeah, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? So a little line there, and again, get our square, square it along the top, and down the edges. Bit of support underneath, looks like it needs it this side this time. And this time I'm gonna go directly on the line rather than to one side of it, because obviously that's an equal distance between the two. There is no keep side, there is no waist side of this line. <laughs> Cool. So get that out of the way. Bit of oak in the middle. Beach either side, and there we go. You can get our rough idea of how big this chopping board is going to be. Need to reduce the thickness a bit, obviously. The only thing we need to do now is cut down the oak to match the width or the length, sorry, of these bits of beach. Firstly, what I'm going to do here is just work out which end of this oak is the most square. So oh, that one's looking a bit ropey. Yeah, we'll cut off that end. So. This will be the end that we reference the ruler from. So what do we say it was? 430, wasn't it? So little mark there, square it around the top. So again, nibble away at the back, lower the saw down, and then hit the entire line perfectly square across its length. If you want to know more about how to saw correctly, I did a video on that as well, so the link's in the top corner for that. The tips about starting the saw up like this and leveling it out is only one of the many tips in that video, so if you're struggling with sawing, be sure to watch that. <laughs> 
Right, so timber is all cut to length and now we can work out what orientation we want these boards to go in. So obviously we're having an oak sandwich here, but we've got options as to which way these bits of beech go and which way this bit of oak goes, obviously. So with this, what I'm gonna do is look at the grain on the beech. And I can do that by looking at the sawn surface here and try and read the grain through it. Or I can look at the end grain here and make a judgment as to what these faces are doing just by seeing what these growth lines are doing here. So these boards here are mostly rift sawn, which means that the growth rings are going diagonally along there and that gives you straight lines on all four faces whereas if the growth lines were going right across the length of timber you'd get really straight lines along the edge here but then on the top you get like a crown figuring thing going on looking at these ends i can see that it's mostly diagonal here and then it's starting to straighten out here so it's a pretty straight line here and then here we're starting to get some like crown figuring but not a lot and what I'm going to do, because this bit of oak here is perfectly quarter sawn along the edges here, means that we've got really straight lines along here, crown figuring going along here, so you can see the growth lines are a little bit weird. I'm going to orientate the beach boards so that the straight parts of the grain are going to be butted up against the oak. So we're going to have like wider growth rings here, tapering into narrower growth rings, narrow growth rings across the oak, narrow onto the beach, and then tapering wider again. So this one is still all fine. The other thing we can look at here is the arc on the growth rings. So you can see on the end grain here that this is kind of like arcing down, scooping down like this, and this one is arcing up, which is exactly what we want. If they are both orientated like this, so that both the arcs are bent downwards, it means that if those growth rings try and straighten themselves out, the board is gonna start bowing over time. These boards, it won't be too bad because they're rift sawn mostly, so the, the chances of that happening are very minimal. But if you've got a crown cut board where the arc in those growth rings is very prominent, that's where you want to make sure that you're reversing it. So arc up on here, arc down on there, and then if there's any movement, it kind of cancels itself out. So just to reiterate it, growth rings are down on this one and growth rings are up on this one, perfectly straight in the middle, so that doesn't matter. Wide grain on the edges, thin grain in the middle. That's the orientation we're gonna go for, I reckon. Now let's mark them up. So this is going to be component one. Let's put a little scribble on there. And this is going to be component three, obviously. And this is going to be component two. So now we know what order they go in. And what we need to do now is mark the face sides and face edges. And in fact, I've already changed my mind. I want this side to be up on the oak because the medullary rays look a little bit prettier. And if I flatten this side first, means I'm less likely to bust through and expose that knot there. So get rid of that. We don't want two on here. That is going to be up. Now face sides and face edges. I'm gonna do a little swish on here and a little swish down the edges here, kind of like a fish shape. And on component three, again, on the face and the edge like that. And on the oak here, because I might be removing that sapwood afterwards, I'll make the opposite side, the face side. And then once I've got these two sides square, I can just plane that down parallel and potentially remove that sapwood later on. And there we go, guys, that is it for part one. So chuck any questions below and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, in the next episode, we're gonna get all of these components square using nothing but a plane. I will see you then. Peace.